everybody, I'm Chanel Hurden for the new Music Buzz. Summer went by way too quickly and we're currently in our two week hiatus from So You Think You Can Dance and America's Got Talent backstage coverage. In this episode, we're at the NBC Fall Rollouts for the new and current fall shows. In our artist spotlight, we have Jay Clemens. So you know what to do, roll that intro. Are you for hairspray? I can't wait because I've always wanted to be in it. Okay. And now I'm finally, and now I'm finally getting to. I saw it originally on Broadway, and um, that was right before Wicked. I want to say a yes, few years it is. before Wicked. Years before Wicked. Uh, but Charlie Brown had happened. This is all just right. me going through my brain, and I thought, how can I not be in this 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 show? But there really wasn't anything. But now I've say grown into a part that fits me and I just can't wait I get to work with my friend. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. we've been friends a long time. <laughs> so you're but she was about born me. but she was born to play a beauty queen. I don't know, something in her past <laughs> might have made her right for it. Miss Teen maybe, yeah. I don't know. And it's a oh, lot of fun. yes. And when you see her daughter, they look like mother and daughter. Well when you see my daughter, we look like mother and daughter. <laughs> You guys are perfect. I know. <laughs> he well, looks... I play her mother. Oh my I play God. her mother. Okay. Yeah. It's oh, of so good. It's, it's, it's just sort of hairspray. Just no. sort of hairspray. <laughs> hairspray. I'm her mother. And so. it, they're perfect together. And yesterday we had a table read, and we there's a lot of there's a lot of fun, a lot of fun going on in the room, but a lot of heart. A lot of heart. So you've started rehearsals for this yet? No, no not till when? October. Not till October. But we okay. but we needed to hear it out loud because it's a new script that I wrote, and we just wanted to make sure everything's in place and all the songs are right, and you know, so you do that sort of read, and then you can plan everything else around. We're also going to be outdoors, part of it. Yeah. Oh, that means I don't sweating. Think you get, I don't think oh, you God. have to do that. Oh, please, Miss Paul, welcome, Paul crabs can't welcome, be outside. <laughs> welcome to the '60s. Good morning, Baltimore. Timeless to me is outdoors, the whole thing. Oh my, it is, it oh my is. God, yes. Yeah, but that's gonna my be. My breasts oh, weigh so much. Oh, no. I had them on yesterday. Oh, you they're, did? They're, they're 52 triple C's or triple E's. Okay, so how much do you think one breast weighs? They're about, they're about 15 pounds of breast. And then, and then my butt. Oh, you, this, but he looks still as good. Really a very, very interesting image. <laughs> yeah. He looks yeah. great, I gotta say. <laughs> I'm sure you're all gonna look amazing, but last question. The fact that it's live, it's kind of like you are on Broadway, you're not really doing a film. Does that change how you feel about the show, or is that making it more exciting? We'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> December 8th, yes, we'll, well, we'll like weigh in. Day. We'll That's weigh in. All about it. I'll ask you that again. Part of hairspray. What went through your mind? Yeah, well, I actually auditioned uh, at an open call. Over 1,300 girls were there. I was number 344 in line. This is my first audition, like my big audition outside of college. Yeah, so this is huge. This is my first thing ever. And <laughs> I had four callbacks after that. And um, apparently they had no for like a week or two and I had no idea and so I went into this final callback and they had put me in a wig and, and makeup and everything just for like a behind the scenes stuff but but I I didn't know that it was actually you know for the real thing yeah. maybe yeah and so um, the director walked into the room that I was in and he said hey Harvey Firestein uh, who's playing my mom Edna he said um, Harvey asked me to give this to you so you can read it uh, so just look into the camera and project and I'm like oh this is fishy <laughs> and so I took the paper out and it said Maddie Balia will be Tracy Turnblad in Hairspray Live. Oh, I know, I tears. <laughs> oh, I know. No, I rewatched. Oh. There's a video of it actually, and yes. I just cried. We got, we got to watch that video. Yeah. So now tell me, why four callbacks? What was happening in four of them besides the last one? That well, there were just one. so many girls, and I mean, okay. I mean, this is a huge deal. So I think they just wanted to make sure that they were getting the right girl. So hope they did. <laughs> of course, but I mean, then this is all new to you. Is this your yeah. first red carpet as well? Yeah, this is my first red carpet. Oh, this is amazing. How yeah. exciting. I know. So what are you looking forward to the most? Uh, this cast. This cast. Just working with this cast. These are people that I've looked up to for so long. And we actually had our first table read yesterday. Okay. Yeah. And I opened the show with Good Morning Baltimore. So I was so nervous. And I was the first one to do anything. And so I did it. And they were just so nice. They cheered for me so loud. And, and yeah. So this is like the ultimate master class for me. So tell me how amazing is it to be involved in Hairspray? Um, amazing. It's We had our first table read yesterday. Yesterday and the cast is out of this world. They're incredible, amazing. Um, just, I don't know. I'm excited. It's gonna be great. I mean, it, the, the hairspray is such like a 
camp, you know, fun, colorful uh, musical, but with a very, you know, relevant and very serious message, you know, in there. And uh, I think it's such, such, such a great, you know, ju ju juxtaposition. So I'm, I'm excited to be a part of it. Have you always been a fan of the show, of the, of the play? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's. I, I actually just honestly, personally, I only saw the movie when it came out, the new, the new version of it. So don't tell anybody. I'm sure they're like, they're like. We'll keep, we'll keep that on the hush hush. Um, <laughs> but it was, but that was fantastic. It was great, and. Uh, um, yeah, so I, I mean, you know, when they asked me to do this show, um, you know, my sister had such a great time on Greece. She loved it, and so I was like, yeah, well, it sounds like fun. Let's do it. Let's do it. And Absolutely. You also coming up in singing in the rain. Am I right? Is um, that yeah, well, that, that's being pushed, you know, into next year now because uh, Broadway's doing great, which is awesome. So there's no theaters available, which is good news. Good news. Um, so it just means, you know, it's going to be a little bit later on, but uh, that's great because there's some really fun projects and it allows me to do things like this. So exactly. It's Timing been perfect. Timing is always right. You it's, never mess with the timing. It's perfect. People people sometimes say that I'm jammy. Do you get that? Where are you from? I'm from South Africa. South Africa. Oh, dang it. It's, maybe you don't know that. <laughs> jammy. Never mind. Okay, never mind. I don't, I don't get that one. <laughs> it's, a Brit it's a British thing. Never mind. Oh, it's a British yeah. thing. Yes. And any more dancing with the stars? You've um, just done like so many shows. Yeah, possibly. I mean, it's uh, I, that the door for me, you know, in my mind is always kind of open and the possibilities. Um, because I love it and it's my family, and so we'll see. We'll see what happens if we can make if we can make it all make it all work. Amazing. Well, lovely to meet you and nice all the best you. with the show. My pleasure. Thank I'm very you. excited to see it. Thank Congratulations you. on your incredible role. Thank this you. is so exciting, hairspray. Have you always been a fan of the play? Yes, I think we all have. It's such a classic. It's you know, it's a part of all of us in our history and. It, the story is timeless, you know, so I I just never imagined myself in it So now looking at it. I see it from a different perspective like oh, okay <laughs> Yeah, me is motor mouth that fits, you know, you're gonna do an incredible job. I, I know thank you. Thank you Thank Talk you. Talk just about uh, you know the play was 17 years ago. Wow. The movie was more than yeah. two decades ago Jeez. Uh, The story was 30 odd years ago and it's dealing with an yeah. issue that we thought was yesterday. Right, right. It is contemporary as it could possibly be. Talk to us about the, what it is saying and what yeah. it is saying to today's audience. Well, you know, it, it says what needs to be said, you know, and things that need to be brought to attention. And it, it taps into just all of the, the um, basically the setbacks, the, the um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just all of those issues, you know, from racism to sexism to um, class to different things and it taps into that and that's the beauty of the story I feel like it touches on that reality and and it welcomes all in the story which oh, I feel like hobby <laughs> this one tell me, man. tell me man about that show. what is that I love it oh my god so I just think it's needed and it's necessary you know and it speaks of real things and so when you speak of the reality of things, those things never really go away. As long as we are alive, there will always be issues in that way. So I think, especially now, the timing is right to address that in a form of art. Because that's when we kind of come together the most and when we understand things the best. And you know what, music definitely brings us all together. Yes. You are an incredible musician, Thank singer, you. And, and actress. Do you have a favorite? Favorite, favorite between singing and acting. Yeah. Oh God, I hope I never have to choose. <laughs> Although music comes to me naturally, and that's what I started out doing first. But film allows me to just be, you know, express myself in any way, you know, in a free way. I hope I never have to choose. Please don't make me choose. I won't make you choose, but I'm not knowing any new album coming out. Yes, I'm actually working on my album okay. as we speak at Epic Records. So look for that as well. And I'm also filming the film Sandy with Adam Sandler, and it'll be oh, on Netflix. Gosh, so a lot is going on, but I'm grateful. I'm I'm happy and yeah, blessed. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time. Thank My name is Maddie Balio. My name is Derek Hump. I'm Harvey Feierstein. I'm Kristen Chenoweth. I'm Jennifer Hudson, you just been buzzed. More of me at the NBC TCAs after this message.
has cash will go to cityloan.com or call 877-553-9071 to borrow $3,000 or more using the equity in your paid off vehicle. The best part, no credit checks. Your car is your credit with City Loan. Over 99% of City Loan customers are in good standing every month. So call 877-553-9071 now. And get this, if you sign up today and you are approved for a loan, you will receive a $25 gift card from Target. Be sure to mention promo code TVAD to receive your gift card. Also, don't forget to like City Loan on Facebook at City Loan Community and follow us on Twitter at City Loan. Now back to the new music buzz. How does it feel to say that I have my own TV show? Well, I pinch myself every day. I mean, it is really a, a big deal and I'm absolutely thrilled to be able to get started. And what can we expect from the show? The, the fun thing for me is the fact that I don't know what to expect. Okay. I can tell you there's going to be a lot of music, a lot of comedy, a lot of heart. Um, celebrating a lot of real people, celebrities, man on the street, all of that stuff. But the way we do it is going to feel unscripted and it's going to feel very spontaneous, which is something that I think is a little bit different for, for TV now. I have a new show. You know what it's called? I don't. Take a crazy guess. Gary. That's it. <laughs> it's going to be a really fun show. We're going to do all kinds of crazy stuff. Can we do a whole show like this? He's gonna play the piano. I'm gonna have that kind of late night party right in the middle of the day. Can I do a Phil Donahue real quick? All right, ladies, what are we working on? You excited? Yes. All right. That's awesome. This it is, is y'all's party. party. Okay, amazing. And maybe a tricky question here, Harry. How did you decide on the name of the show? <laughs> it's tough, right? <laughs> We went from Barry to Larry and ended up on Harry, so it feels right. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it'll stick. It works. It's short, sweet, to the point. That's it. That's it. And what was production like? Well, we've only, we haven't really started yet. We, we've shot a bunch of stuff on the, uh, you know, because it's a daytime show, okay. so we're going to be shooting every day. So we'll sh start on August the 30th. Okay. So I'll tell you then, <laughs> but I hope it'll be yes. all right. But I just want to talk about your music a bit. Can we uh, expect an album anytime soon? Well, right now, because I'm focused on this show, I'm not going in the studio to make a record, but I will be playing on the show a lot. So okay. one thing will kind of have to substitute for the yeah, other. Two birds, one story. Exactly. <laughs> and lastly, I see Harvey's here as well. It's kind of like an Independence Day reunion. Yeah, I know. That's right. Man, he's the best. He's yeah. in, he, he, is, uh, he, he is a treasure, that's for sure. Yeah, amazing. Well, I'm very excited to see your show. Thank You're you. amazing. Lovely to meet you. Thank you. Good to meet you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. It's my son. Is he still breathing? You want to take me off this case? You're going to have to put a bullet in my head. So the Chicago franchise is going extremely well. Yeah. And we've actually renamed our show to Chicago, the new music buzz. Oh, good. Well, yeah. you'll, be our, you'll be our fifth edition. Ah, it'll work. It can <laughs> work. I think it'll work. <laughs> Make it work. Now tell me your character, Jay. He's in all of the all of the shows. What is your shooting schedule like? Oh my gosh, the shooting schedule is insane. I don't <laughs> even know where to start. Yeah, um, it, it gets really crazy when we're doing crossovers. When we're adding two or three shows onto one show, or when we're trying to do all all three or all four. Now all five because he's got SVU too. Well, so six maybe. Six, right? <laughs> Right, and maybe Chicago streets and sanitation, so maybe oh seven. Oh my goodness, we'll oh see. my goodness. No, everybody's made that joke already. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it, it, it can get pretty hectic, and you, you're kind of just trying to keep your wits about you about what scene you're in, where you just came from, where you're going after this, and, and trying to keep the storyline intact, you know? Have you ever messed up and maybe done the wrong script for the wrong show? There's people who won't let me miss up, mess up, okay. so I have that in my favor. You know, you just go over to the script supervisor and you go, where was I? Where, where did my character just go? What just happened? Who said what? What is happening? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then and then you get back on track. Yeah. So now the last season we ended with quite a cliffhanger. Yeah. Season four now, PD, what can right. we expect? Um, coming back in, I don't know what to expect. Oh. Um, uh, we're, we're filming episode two right now, but as, oh, okay. but what I do know is that coming back in, it's gonna it's gonna be a difficult situation for Voight, it's gonna be a difficult situation for Lindsay, and through them for Halstead trying to pick up the pieces because Voight might have murdered someone. And, um, and Lindsay is, is going to try to take care of Voight, and Halstead's going to hope that 
neither of them go, goes down, but he's going to try to protect Lindsay and hope, hopefully she doesn't go down with Boyd if that happens. My word. So now as an actor, do you get all your scripts beforehand so you kind of know what happens in the season? Or are you no, also with my the gosh. audience? Are you no, with no, no, no. I'm with you. Out? I'm with you. I haven't read the third episode yet. We're oh. working on episode two. So oh I don't goodness. know. Yeah, I'm so, with you. So you pretty much live in Chicago then with all this filming? Basically full full time. Um, we're there about nine and a half months out of the year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, it's a fun city though. Amazing. Well, so lovely to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, you for your time. Pleasure. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Can I help you? You're Matthew Casey, the alderman? Yeah. So you just sit back and allow these things in your ward? I'm sorry, and, and you are Patricia Vasquez. You pulled my grandson Victor down from the L tracks? Yeah. How is he? He's in the ICU. I'm sorry. He's a good kid. On the honor roll every semester since his father died. He's got nothing to do with gangs. Was that who did this to him? They're turning our neighborhood into a war zone. My baby doesn't deserve that. No, he doesn't. He's graduating in three days. Been waiting his whole life for this. I I'm afraid the next time he walks down that block, they might kill him. What are you going to do about that? Okay, well, the Chicago franchise is doing so well, and I was actually telling other JC that we've decided to change our name to Chicago, the new music bus. Oh, really? Awesome. You that, yeah, you can, it can join our franchise, yeah. <laughs> it'd be great. Chicago music. I, Chicago you know, I never music. actually thought about this. Well, what other ones I mean, could we do? Chicago music. Chicago Ed, Parks and Rec, Street Sweeping. Chicago Taxi. But I like Taxi, <laughs> Chicago Uber. But now, but I like Chicago music. Chicago That's music. good, because we'll they've, they've got a great music scene. Yeah. It's the other thing about It's a really good music city. Um, but yeah. you're not in that yet. You're in you the well, fire and the PD, right? Yeah. But I like the music scene. I, I would do that. I would do that. You, I would do that. Yeah, I, I know. I'm like, what? How did I not think of this? Yeah. So tell me, being in both of the shows, do you sometimes get confused at as where you at? What's happening? Um, no, it's all right because we tend to like. They tend to be little snippets. Do you know what I mean? It's only if I go over there. It's only one scene, you know. So I just have to know what's going on in their world. Okay. And um, but they catch me up. You know, they're good and read the script and then you're good to go and normally it's just like yeah it's just like one little thing it's like a taste of a taste of fireman casey and yeah, yeah, yeah. in pd you know so um, season season five is on its way yes what can we expect drama okay intrigue okay actually casey's becoming a family man so my storyline's really um well it's quite nice because he's sort of uh reconciling his relationship with dawson and and uh, making the commitment to uh, to to more or less be the the father of this child, this adopted bit of child. So as well coming in. Yeah, well, I think it's a it's a family coming together, you know, um, and a rekindling of of the relationship. You know, they've been up yeah. and down for a while, and it's yeah. it's kind of nice to see them uh, bury the hatchet. So that's kind. I kind of enter season five, you know. Kind of a good place, Amazing. which is nice. Yeah, leave the drama to the other yes. ones, eh? New season, new action. Drama. Yeah, 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 exactly. Severide and <laughs> Bowden can deal with the drama. Yeah. yeah. And what is it like shooting in Chicago? That's oh, brilliant. I mean, it's it, it's we we love it. It's got it, it provides the backdrop of everything we need. You know, we've got you know there's so many stories there from the fire chiefs and everything that's gone down there. It's a you know it's a very diverse city. Um, they, I mean, they've, they've got a lot of problems as well. That's yeah, that's everything. what we need, you know. I mean, all, you know, all the, the gang violence, and it, I mean, it's you know, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, and and this, you know, this is all the stuff that's ripe for us to, you know, do storylines yeah, and, and play around with it. Yeah. Well, all the best for season five. I'm Thank sure it's going to so have much. an amazing response. Yeah. I and I look forward so. to it. All right, cheerio. I'm Jesse Spencer. I'm Jesse Lee Soffert. Hey, I'm Harry Connick Jr. And you've just been buzzed.
up in our artist spotlight is Jay Clemens. Now, if his name sounds familiar, he's the nephew of Clarence Clemens, who played with Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band. Let's check it out. Is it cool if I do this? <laughs> What's up? My name is Jay Clemens, and you are watching the Buzz Artist Spotlight. I got my start in music when I was really young. Uh, my family is very musical, so it was kind of our first language at home. Uh, I started playing professionally when I was about 13 years old. I had my first professional gig right before I turned 13. And um, uh, it was a, kind of a big deal. I played for Bill Clinton's inauguration, uh, which was awesome. And then, you know, as it goes after that, I started hustling and going to you know, coffee shops and clubs and saying, hey, what's your slowest night? Can I come in there and play? And then building it off of that. So it's kind of a fun experience. I started playing the saxophone purely for the sake that uh, Clarence, my uncle, played the saxophone. I saw my first uh, E Street Band show when I was eight years old. And, uh, and, I, and I experienced the first time, I experienced uh, the applause that Clarence received upon his introduction on stage. Uh, and I was, I was awestruck and decided that people must really like the saxophone. So it was a very, sadly to say, it was a very vain moment in my life when I walked out and told my dad, that's what I want to do, I want to play saxophone. And uh, you know, fortunately he redirected me to piano, which I had to do first for a few years, and then eventually was allowed to play the saxophone myself. Do you still play piano a little bit? I do play the piano. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, people often ask this question of like, what's your favorite instrument? Because I, uh, you know, I have fun on a lot of different instruments. Um, I was never able to answer that question really well until recently when I realized that the piano is a full orchestra at your fingertips. You know, uh, you can cover all the bases there. And for that reason, maybe exclusively, it's, it's my favorite instrument. Was it so real to find yourself playing in the band that you watched at eight years old and now being a part of it? Uh, it was very surreal to be standing on stage and looking up at the stands and having a, a memory of being eight years old, looking down on that stage and finding my calling for the first time and then, and then actually standing in that place. And um, I, know, I guess I never thought it to be so literal when I told my dad that that's what I wanted to do with my life. I never wanted to play in the E Street Band. I always imagined that Clarence would be there forever and that he would, uh, you know, that was his place in the world. Um, but I'm grateful to be there now and, and to be able to uh, continue to allow his presence in some way to be there. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, it continues to be surreal though, you know. Um, I think I was 22 years old or so when I realized that the saxophone is kind of a vanity instrument or a, a luxury instrument. Uh, if somebody who's really wealthy has a boat and they hit hard times, the first thing they're going to let go of, as much as they love that boat, is, you know, can't afford that thing anymore. So uh, I don't have this awareness that, like, as a saxophone player, I kind of play that same role. I'm really going to enhance the sound of, of this experience, but at the end of the day, if times get hard, you know, they might let me go. So I figured this is a good time for me to learn how to play the guitar and start working on my own music. And uh, so I started writing music a lot uh, in my early 20s. And, uh, and yeah, started to record my own music uh, in my early 30s. So it's, uh, um, I don't know, I guess it's come full circle in that sense. The first thing I understood about music was its ability to connect people. It was its ability to bring 
all these different people together in the same moment and the same breath to experience the same essence, you know, inside of a moment. For that reason, uh, music has continued to be a tool to achieve that experience. So uh, for me, you know, uh, as an individual, um, that's why I have been driven, I suppose, to, to, uh, to be able to create those experiences on my own. You know, uh, for me, the, the thing I'm, I'm most aware of and most concerned about is, is making a connection with everyone in the room and making it a real moment for each of us, the furthest reaches. Um, whether it's an 80,000 person room or an eight person room, that everyone feels uh, um, aware of the moment and, and present and that we are experiencing the same essence of, at, at that time. Um, and you know, that's what drives me to create uh, as a solo performer. I'm a songwriter, you know, that's just the reality of, of who I am. That's how I identify with the world. That's how I process my day. So. Um, more so than being like, the front man or you know uh, the person that's leading leading the experience, I have to write music. It's it's how I process the realities of my life. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be able to also share th those experiences with other people through that format. Uh, so having a live experience becomes a really beautiful and real and vivid thing. In terms of the record, Fear and Love, a lot of people create music for the sense of like being able to get away from your life for a little while or uh, you know, to escape into a fantasy and you know, have uh, an hour of relief. And that's really important. This record does not do that. This, this record is about dealing with life. Um, and as a musician, as somebody who, who creates music, that is kind of what I stand for. Um, this record is about, about recognizing the realities of where you are in your life and, and, and reconciling, reconciling those, those realities. Reconciling, I can't say that word. Reconciling your fears and, and allowing yourself to understand who you are and, and to find a way to love who you are and to love other people um, outside of that. So it's not a fantasy, it's not an escape. But hopefully it's a relief because we're dealing with where we are. My name is Jay Clemens, and you've just been buzzed. The new music buzz is brought to you by Monster Products, pure monster quality with monster sound, and City Loan. Get cash for your car today. And Rockwell Watch's innovative design. For more music entertainment news, go to www.thenewmusicbuzz.com. So that's all we have from the NBC Summer Press Tour. A special thanks to the NBC staff. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, double tap on Instagram, and follow us on Twitter, all at the new music buzz. I'm Chanel Herlin. Have a lekker day. out.